welcome ratna it's a pleasure to listen to you thank you so much vivian and the team at balwani advantage for putting this up no as uh, as they always say that in india entrepreneur is made overnight in 10 years and some of you will identify with it because nowadays there is a euphoria and a fomo around you know fundraising uh, names coming up in uh, you know news etc but a lot of those names are after a lot of hard work has gone into them so before we start the session on the investor mindset in the healthcare space i would like to tell all of you that every effort that you put in and the number of years that you've been building your enterprises all of it ultimately builds up to making a great enterprise which then when taken to the market will give you the desired results vadhani advantage is a platform which is basically created to help entrepreneurs and to take help them and to partner with them in their journey this is one of the initiatives and therefore it's very important to understand what you require rather than what we want to uh just talk about a lot of businesses especially healthcare if you are running hospitals uh with a few beds if you are running nursing homes you are running single specialty you are running a chain of clinics or you are trying something in telemedicine essentially all of these businesses are fairly capex heavy right and most of the times the entrepreneurs what are the various stages of fundraising that they have when before you go for fundraising what should you keep in mind these are some of the things which probably uh, you know needs a lot of reflection before you actually go out and talk to people right so the first thing is that how do you prepare yourself for fundraising right especially in a space like healthcare where a uh, business is a capex heavy uh the break evens can be longer a lot depends upon the team of doctors that you have right and why i am saying these points because these are some of the things which investors will look for when you go for fundraising right so how do you prepare yourself for fundraising right you have an idea you have an execution plan you have a team when it comes to healthcare uh hospitals what type even when you say okay you want to set up a hospital or you're running a hospital the the important thing is to identify what space you want to be do you want to be in primary care do you want to be in secondary care if secondary care which segment you want to be in cardiac neuro trauma so it is very important for you to understand which space makes more sense to you depending upon your experience your strength your team of doctors uh your management team and understanding your moat uh for example you know there was a phase when single specialty hospitals were doing phenomenally well and just mushrooming anywhere and everywhere we've heard about dr ragarwals uh we've heard about the chain of eye clinics we've had cardiac clinics we've had diabetes clinics apollo came with a special business model where for every specialty whether it is uh you know renal care or it is uh, diabetic care or it is eye care they came up with special specialty clinics so know what is your moat which is very important because if you don't know your moat you won't be able to explain it to the investor right also the other thing is two very important uh you know spokes in your business model are a your competitors and b your customer right like competition analysis i think most of you have been in business for a while you all know what it is understanding especially when you are having hospitals that in the vicinity of 2 kilometers 5 kilometers uh who are the people who are there uh what are the services they are offering what is the price point analysis that is very important second is customizing your offerings to your customer which basically means that if you are setting up something in tier 2 your pricing your infrastructure etc has to be accustomed to what your customer needs right if you're going to set up a five star hospital hospital in a tier 3 location that is not going to help while tier 2 and tier 3 in india are you know very very underpenetrated when it comes to 
uh, critical care and all of that that's very important but even when you set up critical care i have looked at models where in tier 2 and tier 3 they're doing critical care which is remote uh they're doing it through use of the new uh you, you know the new technology platforms uh, where doctors are sitting somewhere else Uh, there is a basic staff which is there in tier two, tier three for critical care, and uh, a lot of the analysis and all is done by somebody who's sitting far away. So I think these are some of the important things to prep up before you go for fundraising, right? Uh, the second question which you should ask for yourself, ask yourself, is that what is it that you want to raise? Why are you in the market, right? if you are just setting up your business you are at a pre revenue stage uh, your revenue requirement will be different so analyzing for the next 2 years right 2 to 3 years how much money you need for your capex which is basically your capital expenditure which essentially means that if you are setting up something if you are setting up beds for your equipment uh, for your furniture and fixtures and how much do you require for opex which is essentially your salary rent utilities etc understanding building it into a financial model and understanding that how your revenue is going to build up how your costs are going to build up what is going to be your gap funding that you require and the initial capital expenditure that you require on the build outs that is also very important so understanding that is important because see today if you are a 5 crore hospital operating uh, 30 beds correct uh you want to expand by another 20 beds per bed you might require 10 lakhs 15 lakhs but if you are if you under budget and you do not budget for operating expenses then your business may not be able to survive secondly you should always go to investors who are like minded who have some connection with healthcare and who have deeper pockets that today if you go you are able to raise 1 rupee tomorrow if you go again to them you should be able to tap their resources again to have follow on rounds right uh i am just going to also look read out some of the questions that we have received and try to take them within the fold or within the flow of the entire uh you know understanding of fundraising or the investor mindset when it comes to healthcare So, so Shubha wants to know is digital therapeutics a successful idea in small towns right i will definitely cover this uh webhav wants to know that practice as a part of avas hospital my question is whether building an own technology platform is an important parameter for raising investment the investment raise will be used to expand in other geographies Okay, uh, Shyamsi wants to know. Would love to understand what role does the use of new technologies play in the investor decisions? My God, there are a lot of questions on technology, and rightly so because in the last one and a half years, we have seen that uh, technology have taken businesses to the next level, and the barriers of distance, the barriers of location, which were there, are broken down because of technology. and a lot of businesses are able to reach the bharat which is the heart of india because of technology uh dr parvez wants to know we just see hospitals as service providers in return a business you want to know does investor expect expansion or profit specific all right so let me take some of these questions while i do this okay so first let's talk a little about technology right when a hospital set up where all do you use this technology one of the important levers of technology is the hospital information systems having a good software which is able to help you track a lot of kpis right is very important so if you are setting up a business even if it is a standalone sometimes you will have hub and spoke model you will have your uh you know services provided in different locations at that point in time the uh technology platform becomes very important to integrate everything the second and the most important technology where technology is being used these days is predictive technology right and when i say predictive technology a lot of predictive technology ai ml is being used for diagnosis right whether it is uh 
you know diagnose uh, whether it is for diagnosis of cancer or it is for x rays to be able to understand uh, you know what, you know predict what are what is going to be the right uh you know rx for that all of those all these, these are the places where technology is getting used tremendously right we have a startup in uh, mumbai where a woman has set up a uh, you know breast cancer testing through the use of technology it's through a kit can be done very easily those are some of the breakthroughs that technology is seeing when it comes to testing and diagnosis the second technology is being used a lot in robotics right uh, robotic surgery uh, being able to do things which were earlier complex through the use of technology that is increasing right the third place that where we are seeing technology is in remote services right and when i say remote services telemedicine telediagnosis has picked up like anything in the last one and a half years a big hospital like apollo at the peak of uh, the pandemic were doing 40% of their opd through telemedicine and then there are a lot of these players who are doing telemedicine there is medpods which is doing in tier 2 to tier 3 locations there are other players who are doing in tier 1 also uh, the other aspect of uh, you know technology is all of these online pharmacies which are clubbing online diagnostic services etc with them so if you ask me is a digital platform required for the business it really depends upon what's your business model but 100% technology can help you leverage what you're doing you can do better with the use of technology you can organize yourself better because you get a lot of data and analysis and you can reach more customers you can reach more patients more locations through the use of technology so whatever your business model right you can up it you can up the ante by using technology do investors look for a digital platform while funding so they will evaluate right uh they will evaluate for sure saying that this is the business model in this business model they are using technology to expand to reach more customers to improve their services so it will definitely have an edge having said that if it's a good business uh an investor is not going to say that we will not invest because you don't have technology but if a competitor has a has technology and that's going to provide i'd a leverage to them definitely then they will say let's create a path let's create a digital transformation path which is happening in a lot of old economy businesses right so healthcare if you break it up into uh some of the old school and the new school the old school are like hospitals clinics etc which are going digital now and the new uh, economy services are like online pharmacy telemedicine uh online radiology etc all of these things are being there so technology is changing things ai in healthcare is creating waves because what it is doing is that it is bringing the hospital or the hospital care or the healthcare services to the patient rather than the patient going to some location so when you think of your business models think of evolving it in such a way where you can take your services to the patient so i hope i've answered the question on uh, technology right okay let's take a few more questions with uh, shanti singh would love to understand the role of technology is i think we've covered this okay parvez is asking do we uh, want to know he wants to know whether investors expect expansion of profit specific so really depends upon the type of investors right and therefore that question takes me to my next slide which is saying what are the stages of funding if you look at a traditional funding model you have pre seed which means that even before you have started your venture you go and raise some funding which is based on a test plan or a business plan you have seed funding which is that you know initially the product is developed the idea is there some testing has been done etc at that point in time you raise funds from 
angel investors angel investors hni hnis are say cxo level people from various organizations who start investing in startups you raise money from incubators and accelerators which are basically launching platforms which help various uh, startups to raise funding and then when you are revenue generating at a certain level of revenue uh, you raise a series a a series b series a series b initially used to be uh, 10 crores 15 crores nowadays because of the euphoria in the market series a series b amounts have increased substantially but if i have to understand from vivian some of the players that uh, vadhani advantage is working with uh, they are all uh, sub 10 crore uh, healthcare players in which case i would suggest that if you are raising funding you need to first tap friends and family you need to tap healthcare professionals which basically means uh, a doctor somewhere who wants to invest or somebody who is with pharma companies wants to invest or somebody who is slightly more related and has some more knowledge of the uh, hospital space or the healthcare space that you are in and you could raise from uh, early stage vcs who are focused on healthcare right uh, your fundraising could be anywhere air from a few lakhs to a few crores right depends upon what your business plan is what investors expect is uh, depending on what type of investor so some investors suppose it's just a one hospital and somebody is invested in that hospital what they are expecting from that is up front you are clear that my all my eggs are in this uh, basket and uh, i am going to put my might behind this hospital to make it a successful thing so in that case the investor is going to expect dividend and profit from the operations right but if you are a telemedicine player and you are you say that i am currently in uh, five cities i want to expand to another 15 cities i need funding for that expansion then they are looking for funding and expansion and growth and then they will expect that some series a series b investor will come in and take them out you know, take them out means buy them out and they will make money from that so it essentially depends upon what stage your business is in and what you really uh, have promised to them correct so those are the things which can decide uh, what whether investors are looking for profit or the investors are looking for regular dividends or uh, you know likewise correct please highlight a little more for technology in tier 2 tier 3 cities or any other sample as per your chain as per our chain is considered so parvez you will have to tell me a little more about what exactly you are doing and then i can help you with examples of technology leverage within the space that you are operating in would you like to share with us what what you are doing vivian uh, is the audience allowed to unmute and speak yeah ratna they can unmute themselves at any point of time so anyone if you have any point that you would like to make you can either raise your hand or type a message or you can unmute yourself and even uh, make a point okay so parvez we'll wait for you if you want to know more about the technology in your space you will need to share with us what space you are in hello everyone good evening i am dr parvez sofi i am a critical care specialist at karnal unit we have a multi specialty hospital uh, uh, which was set up around 8 years back in karnal we are doing good as per the space is uh, considered and the departments we have and we don't have more infrastructure to expand but i want to know how can this technology be used in such cities where you cater more of a interiors of the uh, haryana where uh, karnal is a city but you cater people who are not much educated and who does not use much of technology absolutely. so how can absolutely what you could do is that in and around karnal you have to first identify which locations you want to target in those locations you can either first just make yourself known through camps through promotions through pharmacy chains a lot of hospitals try have a pharmacy chains for promotions or the local doctors and then you can use the telemedicine platform 
saying that once a week or once a month your doctors will be stationed there for 3 days uh they will attend to patients where specialists are required they will uh, you know use telemedicine platform so basically video calling right a zoom equivalent platform where the patient and the doctor can meet without the doctor needing to travel and that's how you will be able to reach many many more customers so that is telemedicine is one way in which uh you can expand your reach into the interiors i hope that answers your question yes Hello. thank you thank Your, you very much right pish wants to know what is quality where does quality lie in the eyes of investors investors are in to make money that you will do it better than there are other investment opportunities or a big unique model what does quality fall why does quality falls back right so pish when investors look right they will first look at the overall market right that overall whether healthcare is growing within healthcare which segments are growing is tertiary growing is primary growing is, is pharmacy growing etc so they will have a certain view of the world in terms of that we want to back these things some investors back hospitals some investors back more tech based players so every investor has a niche which they back right quality all of the and then they will look at the business model saying that you know what is your growth rate what are your margins how are you expanding what is your cash flow when are you breaking even etc so these are the some of the things which an investor will look at but quality whether the i mean i didn't understand what you mean by quality but the whole quality aspect of it gets reflected in your pnl and uh, pnl so if you have quality you will be able to get more customers which in turn will I'll help you get more revenue, help improve margins, and a faster break even. So investors, when they invest behind a brand, they look at the brand from historical performance. Plus, they will do market analysis to understand what your customers think about your brand. They will see what your competitors are doing, mm-hmm. how you're growing vis-a-vis your competitors. So they do a commercial diligence, which is basically a market diligence. they will do a financial diligence to understand whether the numbers are the way they are stacking up and then they will do a legal diligence but that is more technical from your perspective the test of quality will reflect itself in historical all right mm-hmm. Okay so Utkarsh wants to know most of the ideas with us are at a niche stage and an initial investment is required even for the proof to concept what steps do we as medical persons need to take to get angel investment initial investment to start a technology based delivery model this is a very good question actually Utkarsh because a lot of doctors okay are excellent at what they do right they are excellent at the RF where they need help is that now i have an idea i know i want to do this but how do i take it off the ground right you might be wanting to do something which has an initial investment requirement that initial investment could be bootstrap when i say bootstrap it could come from you or your family if not you have to go the route of hnis and angel investors There are a lot of angel networks which exist today, where you can go and make your pitch. And I will cover very quickly in this session what is pitching and how do you make your pitch. But there are these networks. Uh, I will also put my LinkedIn profile on the chat, okay? So that later, if any of you guys want any help in terms of connecting with anybody or getting some advice in terms of how do you take things forward, I will be happy to assist you. right uh right so that is why when you say that how do we go about it you go about it by saying that i'm going to approach i'm going to approach hnis i'm going to approach angel networks right this can be done directly by understanding which are the angel networks which are there 
and uh, you know can help you in your fundraising journey or in your venture startup journey right but before you do that as a doctor you're excellent at what you do you know what you're doing but when you explain to somebody you need to make an elevator pitch right and the elevator pitch should have three or four or these elements which is what is the problem or the need gap that you are trying to address right are you trying to address the fact that there is no critical care in uh, tier 3 cities are you trying to address the fact that uh, you know basic doctors are there in uh, you know certain locations but they don't have access to specialists are you trying to address the problem of saying fake medicines uh, which is a big 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 problem in india right now uh, in uh, interiors are you trying to address the problem of child nutrition by setting up something for children so a is defining the problem or the need gap b is defining why you would be better than the others which is your usp unique selling point usp is unique selling point three is giving yeah. the management capabilities in terms of whether you are one man army is that sufficient you have a team etc and the fourth and the important thing is that what is your art right like for example uh, utkarsh mentioned that he has an idea he needs to take it off the ground what does he need for that correct perfect uh paris i believe you raised your hand is there a question that you want to uh, share with us Okay, Vivian. If, Hello. Yeah. Actually, I want to know if you are getting okay. fundraising. We have a chain of hospital, and you have promised something for uh, to investors. And now uh, you are ma- majorly some uh, hospitals are profitable. Now you are adding more hospitals to your chain, which are upcoming hospitals, and you are adding new investment to new hospitals. So I want to know. what th- that was actually my earlier question what actually investors look when you are expanding your chain you are some hospitals are profit- profitable and some are yet to get profitable so how do we increase the chain and then how do we see this profitability and the growth of the uh, chain overall correct good question dr parvez uh so Dr. Parvez, essentially, what an investor while investing will look for is that some of your mature hospitals, where are they? Are the mature hospitals doing? What are the margins at which they are? If they feel that, what they will essentially look for is that is your mature hospital cash accretive in the sense are they generating cash flows? Correct. Those cash flows you can deploy partly for your expansion, and obviously you are going to them. for funding for expanding so then they will want to see that if you have expanded to new locations what is the growth and the break even trajectory for that right is it 3 years 5 years 7 years whatever it is they will need to understand that and have confidence that you will be able to bring those hospitals also at the same level at which your current hospitals are right 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 and uh, one more thing we had a last slide where we mentioned usp is this usp static or dynamic because uh, whenever we start we when we started in our hospital for critical care that was a usp at that time but right now uh, there uh, there was replication of the same thing and uh, some hospitals came with the same facilities so how can we define the usp right usp is very dynamic sir usp depends upon uh, you know whether you're first in the market you manage to keep your usp for some time but when others come and it becomes a need to product uh, how do you innovate and evolve and that's what is the challenge which every entrepreneur faces right so first to the market always helps uh, you know brand building will require quality services so that your customers come back to you and it will require uh, providing them uh, the new age things etc which will then be able to drive so when you when you say that how do i how do i manage to keep consistent usp 
it essentially also involves that now what new things that I want to start which can help me expand so the new thing could be a new location it could be a new service or it could be a new way to approach go to the market and uh, yeah, thank thank you thank you very much right I also wanted for the benefit of all others who are there on this uh, call who wanted to share with you that when you make a pitch pitch means basically when you present to the investors that you are looking for funds what are some of the things that you should cover and this is very important because as I rightly said and I have worked a lot in the healthcare space to know that doctors are masters at what they do right most of the medical professionals but when it comes to being able to tell their story right that's where they need a little bit of prep work and that is why when you talk about your story talk about the market talk about your offering and your USP talk about your go to market strategy right and you say go to market strategy is that how you going to get customers are you doing localized marketing are you doing online marketing are you looking at uh you know using technology or a distance uh uh this uh this online distance services for that right the other is the execution strategy you may have a great plan right saying that i want to build technology in therapeutics which helps uh, management of diabetes correct mm-hmm. but uh, by you know either by analytics alerts whatever whatever but what is your execution plan how are you going to build that how are you going to market that what's going to be the pricing for that uh, all of that needs to be in place right uh, again forming the business plan understanding the unit economics that what is your gross margin how are you going to become how are you going to break even etc those are important things to explain to investors some of the investors h and i investors they don't go into that much of detail a vc investor will go into that much of detail h and i investor may or may not go into that much of detail so for the h and i investor which you or your cohort should be targeting you need to explain to them the need gap your usp and your capability i think these three things can really help you go out get some funding for your idea and execute it i covered a couple of points in terms of what do investors look at what is the importance of uh, technology in the healthcare space how do you where what type of investors to approach how do you approach them what do you tell them when you approach them so if there are still questions i hope this is useful to you i try to answer most of the questions that have come in the chat and uh, any of the questions that you guys have raised during the call but if there is something else uh, i am happy to answer is uh, one of the questions which kind of struck my interest was uh, shubhrash asking is digital therapeutics a successful idea in small towns uh, shubhrash i will tell you in the last one and a half years the amount of digital that has been used for delivering healthcare in small towns is unbelievable Uh, I don't know what space you are in, but uh, you can check out players like Karma Healthcare. Uh, you can check out Medcords. Uh, there are a whole bunch of other players. You can check out Dozy. You can check out Cloud Physician, two of the companies which Vaghani Catalyst has backed. Some of them are doing some amazing work when it comes to remote delivery of healthcare services. Thank you, Ratna. Thanks a lot for the entertaining sessions. I just wanted if uh, we could, uh, you know, touch upon uh, some of the firms in the healthcare segment that we have worked with. If you can highlight the sort of uh, uh, the persona that you have faced, the sort of challenges that you thought that they were facing from an uh, uh, investor viewpoint. If you can touch upon, uh, you know, for a couple of minutes on those points as to what uh, you thought were the key takeaways from your experience of dealing with them, then maybe for people who are, you know, in the stages as simple as to bring a pitch deck to something as complicated as going about uh, and having a face-to-face meeting, maybe if you can cover your experience across the range of uh, this because you are an experienced veteran in the field, I think that would be of benefit to the attendees. So. So I've worked with a lot of hospitals. Of course, the scale has been significantly large for the hospitals that I worked with. But if, if you look at any hospital, whether it's a single uh, standalone hospital or a chain, uh, 
one of the biggest issues that i have seen is the leakage that happens in the hospitals right uh, there is a lot of scope for margin improvement by taking few steps in terms of managing the doctor costs well managing the utilities or managing even the consumables well uh, so that are some of the spaces which i have seen that as investors we could add a lot of value in terms of bringing up margins the second biggest challenge for hospitals is growth right uh, while uh, it is fairly underpenetrated etc etc but uh, every specialty how do they grow what is the sources through which they go to the market is something that has really helped if you can put down a strategy for that right so for example uh, how do you source your customers whether you go through business development for doctors or you go through uh, you know camps or you're doing digital or, or you're doing referrals a lot of it helps in terms of um, you know getting more customers so that are some of the things that i have seen have really helped the other challenge uh, which i see hospitals facing is attracting and retaining the right doctor teams one of the best ways that i have seen which they've been able to do is by tying down the doctors as semi owners right so either you create an esop scheme where you give them some shares some stake some incentives for retention that really works well right in single specialties or in uh, like say i care clinics dental clinics etc i think the biggest problem is it's 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 a retail business you have to find the right location every location you have to do uh you know sourcing of your customers etc so the expansion in this places cannot be a mad expansion right keep you find a location you open it up over there you really need to figure out by doing your initial uh, research in terms of where to open why to open what is your market etc etc and i would if any of you is trying out any uh, expansion uh, locational expansion please be very careful because it's it's a huge battle right uh, the third thing the fourth thing that i have seen people try to do when everybody wants to do that is building technology in their businesses right which essentially really helps them extrapolate to another level right whether it is sourcing whether it is data and analytics which helps them diagnose things faster or you know in most hospitals uh, they use a lot of analysis to see how do we improve the rcop which is the average revenue per operating bed or how do we reduce the number of days a patient spends in in the hospital because the more they are able to churn the more you are able to grow and also it's better for the patient right from impact perspective also uh, how do you treat him faster and most efficient manner right to keep his bills also mm-hmm. under check to keep him also uh, you know to help him maintain sanity so i think these are some of the things vivian that i have seen that where a lot of value add can be done i think before we proceed uh, i can see a hand raised by vandana so would you like to take one last question from vandana sure hi ratna yeah. this is vandana from zintio and thank you for the session uh, you have touched upon this uh, before in your presentation about uh, digital digitalization of uh, healthcare services uh, especially hospitals so uh, you know for the benefit of everyone present here like many of them are uh running existing hospitals and then given the situation given the launch of ndhm and everything they would want to probably look at um digitalizing so how does the investor look at it let's say if a hospital comes specifically for this purpose investment for you know going ahead with digital health or technologies what would be the investor's take on it so investors would be very happy to evaluate it because it is the most in thing right now but they will want to see a model they will want to see that how much investment do you need what are you building and how is that going to convert into more customers and expansion so they will want to see the model that suppose if you are trying to build a telemedicine model right like how dr pavi said that they are in karnal but they want to reach the interiors so if you are trying to build a telemedicine platform what is the cost of that platform and how will that platform scale up 
Okay. So I understand like a standalone investment for a particular niche thing is also possible. That's what I hear you say. As long as it's sort of presented with connection to the overall like uh, PNL and expansion and what are what is the revenue enhancement. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yes, Doctor Anurag. Thank you, ma'am, for this wonderful session which you have given. And we are also in the domain of entrepreneurship along with. Uh, we are having our own medical college and hospitals so with uh, do this is possible for raising funds for medical colleges and hospital medical colleges for for, for, for educational institutes or uh, or we can able to raise only for corporate hospitals and chain of corporate hospitals only i mean funding can be raised for anything as far as there is a uh... expansion based business model or if there is a cash flow generating business model you will find some investor who is trying to look at it so aisa nahi hai ki ek field mein paisa raise ho sakta hai dusri field mein nahi ho sakta education okay. has always been investors favorite but of course there are Edu- actually actually we are into educational domain so we are having our own dental colleges uh, ayurvedic colleges and mbbs colleges and hospital both colleges and hospitals we are having so we are not not into corporate hospital model but we are into educational uh, model of uh, this medical side so uh, so for for, for that uh, the the model of uh, representation and due diligences will change uh, in different way so so i i just want to consult you regarding that only Yeah, so of course, the ed- so it will be treated more like an educational business rather than a healthcare business. So the economics will be different in terms of, uh, you know, what is your realization per student? What are your margins? How are you growing? What is your on your? I mean, generally, educational businesses are fairly cash integrated. So you will have to find an investor. I mean, so I, I'm not really sure, but are you looking for capex? It depends. You'll have to picture. Make your pitch according. Okay, okay. Thank you, ma'am. Sure. Yes, Utkarsh. Yeah, I have just one quick question. That uh, when we read the market news and understand the investor space, we find that uh, majority of the investments happens on the team. If I am not wrong, and uh, most of the teams do have a background of you know consulting background. IITs, IIMs, and you know, a team which has experience with McKinseys and BCGs. For us who are doctors, you know, uh, when we we start something on those spaces, and when we come in front of the uh, investors, and they have a lot of uh, companies in in front of them. So how do we make ourselves attractive in the eyes of them? You know, com- vis-a-vis if we compare with them, is it just a heuristic understanding of mine, or is it rational to think in that way that yes, they invest more on the teams? than particular project so doctor utkarsh uh, every person plays on their strength your strength is your medical knowledge right so you play on that right but the general belief is that doctors are excellent at what they do and therefore when you have an idea something like that when you talk about the execution you need to talk about a team which will help you execute you may not have the mckinsey's and the bcgs as a part of the promoter team but definitely you can get some iitns etc to work for you depending on what your idea is so i don't think that in a medical field where a doctor has an idea and he wants to present a, a you know a startup idea or a growth idea to an investor they're going to say that no he is not a consultant so we're not going to back him they are going to back you based on your idea based on your skill set that you bring to the table you will of course need somebody else to if you execute it which is what the comfort that they need i've seen a lot of businesses where uh, you know doctors try to play a dual role of uh, you know on the medicine front also and being trying to run the business all by themselves that becomes very difficult okay thank you thank you very much Doctor Atkarsh, if you would like to have any assistance in terms of uh, you know fundraising or preparing yourself, you can always reach out to the Vadhani Advantage Program. 
you can apply on the program there and then we'll uh, you know our team will be more than happy to get in touch with you to understand your issues and to help you handle you walk through them ratnam it was a truly enriching session we are sure that our attendees were able to learn a lot from it if uh, you know as i said for dr utkarsh that is applicable to everyone else also if you'd like to avail all services then uh, please feel free to uh, mention about uh, you know please feel free to apply on the program the link has been shared and we'll be more than happy to talk to you thank you ratnam thanks a lot